Hello and welcome back to my tutorial on how to make an augmented reality game in Unity. In the first section of the videos, we covered how to set up our phones and our computers for developing AR and Unity. And for this section of the videos, we'll be going over different features that are available for us to play around with and learn about um, that are built in with AR Foundation. Some of the features we're covering in this section of the tutorial is plane and point detection, having the camera be able to recognize the different planes within the scene that we're showing it. Also lighting and shadows and how to make our objects look good in AR. We'll also be covering on-screen gestures and be able to manipulate our objects by touching on our phone screens. Next will be image recognition. We'll also be going over 3D UI and occlusion. And don't worry if you don't know what all of these things mean, we'll go over them in a second. Some of the other cool AR features that are available um, that we are not going over include things like hand tracking and gestures. Um, so far I've tried out Mano Motion um, and it's worked pretty well. Um, so if you ever want to play around, you can get a free license and um, see, check out their documentation and try to get that to work. There's also face tracking, which is built in with AR Foundation, so you don't have to download any external tools or anything, unlike the hand tracking with Mano Motion. We also will not be covering object detection because it's only available on AR Kit and not AR Core with Android. And as a PC and Android user, I am not able to test this out right now. And lastly, ray casting. For this section, we'll be going over objects and interaction within AR and the way we can have an object appear in a scene in 3D space, real space, um, through plane and point detection. Also being able to light it and make it look good, as well as manipulating it with on-screen gestures, um, have it appear with image recognition, and finally changing a bit more parameters with the 3D UI. So let's get started with the plane and point detection. Here I have my basic Unity sample scene. I've went ahead and set it up according to the first tutorial that I've done. The only other thing that I've done is I've imported this sample model that I'll be using throughout the, this tutorial. You can download your own model and have work with that as well. Going back and describing a little bit about what plane detection is, when multiple points are congregated in one area um, and the camera is able to recognize the identifiable, and identifiable features, it helps the app draw a plane to represent that surface. So it does not do well with dark areas or plain backgrounds. So yeah, the first thing we'll do is we'll add our AR Play Manager script here. We will add also our AR Point Cloud Manager. Okay, now that we've added the scripts, we'll go into our hierarchy, XR, AR default point cloud. And we'll take this and we'll make it a prefab by dragging it into our assets. And we can delete this for the scene. Now clicking back on our AR session origin, we can drag this default cloud prefab and drag it right here. We'll do the same with the AR default plane. Drag it into assets, make it a prefab, delete, and click on this and drag it right here where the plane where it says plane prefab. That's pretty much all you have to do to set up just the basic prefabs. We'll change the name of our scene. For now, let's rename this points and planes. And we'll build and run and see how it looks. Now, as we run our app, we can see 
points of interest within the environment being generated as well as the planes and it does really well with this pattern of my bedspread and it's divined really nice clear plane there it doesn't do so well with horizontal planes i found or vertical planes actually um and it's better at horizontal um but it is doing its best to calculate how the environment is set up now that we've seen how AR works in identifying key features in the scene, let's add a model into our scene and add some lighting and shadow to make the model look good in AR. So first, let me drag my model into the hierarchy. Um, if it's not already automatically at zero, just click on these three dots and reset the position. As you can see, it's kind of dark. Let me. I decreased the size of the gizmos earlier, so let me increase it so I can see where the camera is. I'll just click on the AR camera and try and move this in front of the camera. I'll turn it around to 180. In game view, you can see the model. I think what works best is to put the model at a bit of a length so it's not super close and let me decrease the size of these gizmos so we can get it out of the way unity has quite a few different basic lighting options that you can use you can use a directional light which is what we already have and this basically casts light in all directions by rotating it, we can change which direction the light is cast. Moving it further or closer doesn't really change anything in terms of the intensity or position of the light because it's use lighting the scene all around, so not only at this one location. So I'll just decrease that a bit. And then we can also, as you can see, we already have a directional light automatically added into our scene when we first opened it. We can also add point light, which casts lights in all directions, unlike the directional light. But the position matters because it's the light is being generated from a single point. And it's generated in a spherical area, so the further away it is from an object, the more fall off and the less intense the light gets. Then you can also add spotlights. Another thing you can do is to add is add shadows, but first we need something to project the shadow on. So let's create a 3D object. Let's do a quad. First, let's reset this position and scale it down. Let's do 0.1 for now. We'll also have to rotate this so that it's flat and then move it so that it's underneath our model. And you can see the shadow already projecting. If you see that your shadow is boxy and doesn't look exactly like this, what you have to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, and go to Quality. Then change the shadow projection from stable fit to close fit. What I found is that the these shadows don't render correctly in the AR real-time environment. I still have to look into more into it as to why it still shows the boxy shadows as we're working in the scene. 
we can work with the more higher detailed stable fit shadows. Even though it's still higher detailed, there's still a little bit of crunchiness in the edges, as you can see. But it'll work fine for our purposes. And so we don't want this to show in our scene. We just want to have our model and the shadow without the plane. We'll have to import a shadow and material. So just drag and drop the mobile AR shadow custom material into your scene and go create new material. We'll name this shadow material. Now under shader, change this from cu to custom and click on the mobile AR shadow and just drag onto your plane. And boom, there you go. From here, I'll go into more lighting settings that will further increase the reality of our AR lighting. But one thing I've found is that the AR environmental probe that we will be using does not seem to be working with Unity 2020. I've not found any documentation yet as to why it doesn't work, but hopefully I'll be able to find answers soon. I have a feeling it has to do with the way that it, our foundation and AR core has been updated and integrated into Unity. It used to be used as more of a standalone SDK that you would import into Unity. But now that it's in integrated, the process has become slightly different with AR Core. Hopefully in future updates, they'll be able to fix this issue. But for now, I'll just show you how to do it. And although it won't necessarily show when you build to the phone, hopefully in future, you would be able to use it for your projects. We'll go to right click and create a light reflection pro. And this will create a sphere around our object. Sphere. We'll change this type from big to custom. And we'll be importing a cube map to add as an image to for our reflections on our model. To do that, you'll have to download an HDR. You can find HDRs at HDRI Haven, also known as Polyhaven. And you can go and browse the HDRs and download any that you feel like you want. Once you have it imported, change the texture shape to cube and scroll down and hit apply. Now select your reflection probe and drag this into the cube map. Then you'll start to be able to see reflections in your model, depending on the materials that are shown. Let's create a new material to see how we can change the material settings and affect the reflections. I'll drag this onto the skin and I'll give it a similar brown color. Now when you increase the smoothness, the detail of the reflection increases as well. The metallicness also increases the amount that is reflected within the material. I'll turn the metalness down for now and keep the smoothness at 0.5. You can also change details within the reflection probe, such as the intensity. When you want to be able to create reflections from your real world environment, what you'll have to do is take a different approach. So we'll disable this for now and click on the AR session origin. We'll add the AR environmental probe. What I forgot to mention is that when we will not be using the point cloud script anymore, so you can remove that component from the scene now. And then by adding this AR environmental probe, the camera will sample images from your scene to create lighting within the object. This is one of the features that I found that does not work as well in Unity 2020. Another thing to further heighten the realism of the lighting within your scene is to go to the AR camera and change the light estimation to ambient intensity. This will have the camera estimating the amount of light that is present in your environment and projecting that onto your object. 
In dark areas, the model will be dimly lit. I found in my doc in some documentation that using the environmental probe manager and the light estimation in conjunction with AR core does not typically work, so you have to choose either one or the other. Now that we've covered the basics of lighting, we'll go into a bit of objects and interaction and see how we can add scripts and other assets to our project to be able to manipulate our object on screen with touch gestures.